Today I'm going to show you an awesome technique that I use so much on this channel called coffee saccharum. So for those of you who aren't aware of coffee saccharum, it's a really delicious zero waste coffee liqueur or syrup made from leftover espresso pucks or filter coffee and it works in so many different recipes. So the liqueur can be subbed in pretty much anywhere that calls for a liqueur, bringing a really nice coffee flavour, but it's also really delicious on its own. And it works out to be cheaper than buying a commercial coffee liqueur as well. And the coffee saccharum syrup is at the base of my ultimate espresso martini template, which is maybe what led you here. But it also works in lots of other drinks that call for a syrup, bringing that really nice coffee sweetness too. And the key value of both of these and making them from scratch is that you can actually adapt every ingredient in the recipe to get exactly the flavour profile you're looking for, which we'll talk about through the video. For those of you who are aware of coffee saccharum, you'll know how much I love these ingredients and how often I use them on the channel. And you'll also recognise them from some much older videos, which today we're bringing up to date, incorporating some tips and tricks I've learned along the way about how to make coffee saccharum more effectively and more deliciously, and also how to use it. So consider this the definitive guide to coffee saccharum. Let's do this. Alright, so what exactly is coffee saccharum? Essentially we're taking inspiration from oleosaccharum, which is where you'll infuse the peels from citrus fruits into sugar, and then the sugar will pull all the oils from the citrus fruits, giving a really nice thick citrus forward syrup. But you can also apply this to other ingredients, things like banana peels work really well, pineapple skins, and pretty much anything with a high enough moisture content to infuse into the sugar works really well. So you can draw out more than just oil, you can draw out the moisture from ingredients too. And today we're going to take this technique and apply it to spent coffee. So to make our coffee saccharum, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need our coffee, which is either leftover espresso pucks or filter coffee grounds. We're going to need a sugar of your choice. We're going to need a spirit and or filter coffee, which I'll explain in a second. There's slight variations in the ratios between syrup and liqueur. And then we're going to need some equipment, such as a paper filter, a vessel to strain it into. We're going to need a big old bowl to mix it in, and then a set of scales to our ingredients. And we're going to get started with step one, which is preparing our coffee element. So the first two steps are exactly the same, whether or not you're making a syrup or a liqueur. And we're going to start with one part of our coffee. And as I said, this can be espresso grounds or filter coffee. And you can choose any coffee you like for this. The ingredients I've chosen today are going to give us a really nice kind of traditional flavour profile of chocolate, nuts, butterscotch, toffee, and a little bit of fruit coming through but the ingredients you choose will have a massive impact on the final flavour. So this is going to be really versatile, but I really do encourage experimentation. So really consider this as a template and you can adapt every single ingredient to get different flavour profiles, which I'll talk about later. So one part here is 100 grams, and this will give us around about 300 grams of liqueur or 150 grams of syrup, but you can easily scale this up or down depending on how much you want to make. So when it comes to your pucks or grounds, the fresher they can be, the better, because we're not just extracting the oils, we're also extracting some of the leftover moisture content from the extraction to make our base. If you're not making your saccharum straight away, the best thing I can recommend you do is take your pucks or your grounds, put them straight in the freezer, and this will keep that moisture content nice and high. If you're going to use frozen pucks, just let them defrost in the sugar and then follow all the steps as normal once they've defrosted. So now the coffee's all ready to go, we can move on to step two, which is making our saccharum base. So to make our saccharum base, all you need to do is add one part, so the same amount of coffee, 100 grams of a sugar of your choice. And you do want to make sure it's a dry sugar, so something like a light muscovado sugar, dark muscovado sugar, castor sugar, as long as it isn't a liquid sweetener like honey or agave, whatever one you choose will work really well. I'm using light muscovado sugar, which has those really nice butterscotch and toffee notes which tie in with the coffee. So now we've got 100 grams of coffee, 100 grams of sugar, you just want to break up your coffee, mix it into the sugar, keep mixing this round and you'll see a pretty profound change. So at the moment they're kind of mixing and you can see brown and the lighter brown of the muscovado but over time it'll look like the sugar almost disappears which is what you want in there. So this process is actually quite quick you just want to keep breaking it all up and stirring and eventually you'll be left with this amazing shiny slurry. As long as the coffee grounds are nice and fresh this should happen within a minute or two and you can see it's really starting to change already. So now we've got our saccharin base ready to go, which literally only took a minute or two. We can move on to step three, which is making this into either a syrup or a liqueur. So now we've got our saccharin base ready to go. This is where the recipe kind of splits off, depending on whether you're making a liqueur or a syrup. If you're making a liqueur, you want to add one part of your spirit. I'm going with aged white rum, 100 grams, and two parts of filter coffee, which can be the same or a different coffee. Whereas if you're making a syrup, you just want to add one part, so 100 grams of either a spirit or filter coffee. And just remember if you add a spirit, this is going to be kind of a boozy syrup, so you need to allow for that in your final recipe. Whereas if you had filter coffee, it'll have a shorter shelf life, but a little bit more coffee flavour. So now whether you've made the liqueur or the syrup, you just want to give these a really good mix together. And while I do so, I'll remind you of exactly the ratios of each one. So in the liqueur, we have one part of our coffee base, and I'm using a chocolatey coffee. We have one part of our sugar, I'm going for light muscovado sugar. 
We have one part spirit, and I'm going for an aged white rum. And then two parts filter coffee, either the same or a different coffee, and this will change the dynamic of the final drink. And over here we have our equal part coffee saccharum syrup, which is one part of our coffee base, one part sugar, and one part either spirit or filter coffee, depending on which you prefer. So now let's finish these off in step four. So the final step is just to strain out all our kind of coffee grounds in here, and you just want to do this with a paper filter. And be prepared, this can be a little bit messy, and it does take quite a long time. So the first part will run quite quickly, but if this does choke, there's a few things you can do. So first of all, you can give it a little tap on the counter, which tends to get things moving really well. But if that doesn't work, you can just pass this into a fresh paper filter and that'll get things moving really nicely. I think the nature of using really finely ground coffee, especially if you're using espresso grounds, is that it's gonna take time, maybe a day or two, but this is 100% worth the effort. And what you're left with is a really delicious coffee saccharum liqueur or a coffee saccharum syrup. So as I've shown on this channel, you can use these ingredients in so many recipes. The liqueur can pretty much be substituted into most drinks, wherever you see a liqueur called for. And the same with the syrup, and this is particularly good in espresso martini, so give that one a go if you haven't already. These ones are built to be a kind of traditional, very versatile flavor profile, so they'll work in pretty much any application. But what you can also do is really play around with this. You could get a really tropical flavor profile by choosing a tropical coffee, maybe a coconut sugar and a more funky rum, or you could go a completely different direction. You could go with a very kind of floral and light version where you use a floral light coffee, maybe a washed coffee with a lighter sugar, maybe golden caster sugar and even gin. And that works really, really well. Keep these in the fridge. I personally keep them in there for a few weeks at a time with no issues when it comes to kind of freshness or quality, but obviously use your own judgment here. And you can also scale the recipe up or down to make either more or less, depending on how much you want to use. So let me know in the comments below if you've made either of these, and if you did so, what recipes you put them in and how they turned out. And if you've enjoyed this kind of thing, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking just here. And if you want more inspiration on how you can use both of these, I'll put a full playlist with loads of recipes featuring coffee saccharin just here. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.